Hello, this is Tim White, and I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use Reaper for podcast editing. Reaper is a digital audio workstation that is a piece of software that's meant for audio production. It is more than just an audio editor like Audacity. It is actually meant to be a full multi-track recording and production suite. However, like most DAWs, it is aimed out of the box at music production and not necessarily narration production, which is what a podcast is. But with a few tweaks, it's easy to get Reaper working for podcasts. So the first thing we're going to do, we've got a brand new project here. We're going to go ahead and go to View, Time Unit for Ruler, and change that to Minutes and Seconds. That way our ruler across here is more applicable to what we do with podcasts. The second thing I'm going to do is go to Options, Snap Grid Settings, and change this to 1 32nd of a beat. And that's tightened up our grid nicely. The next thing we need to do is get some audio to work with. So I'm going to go up to Insert, Media File, and I'm going to grab this recording. This recording is a raw recording that I originally recorded in Audacity. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. Now I zoom in by using the scroll wheel on the mouse. I'm rolling the scroll bar up right now, and you can see that this is about the 40 minute mark at the end of my show. If I want to zoom out so I can see the entire audio file, this thumb at the bottom of the screen also is a zoom control. I can just double click on it and now I've zoomed out and I'm seeing all the way from 0 to 37 minutes or so where the end of my show is. If I want to see where that is exactly I can click here and you can see 40, 32. Now I'm looking at the entirety of my audio file and I want to get started editing it. You can see this is a stereo file. There are two tracks of recording. In many cases, if you recorded this in Audacity, you might actually have two different microphones recording two different people. So go ahead and right click on this thing, and you can see that there is item properties. Item properties is an important menu to know and get to love. It lets you do all kinds of fun things. Well, here's our item properties window, and what we're going to do first is take a look at this channel mode. In this case, though, we're going to do mono left, and that's going to give us just the left channel of audio. So now I've got just the left channel. Now I'm going to right click on this track and I'm going to do duplicate selected tracks. Now I've got this twice. I'm going to select just this lower track, right click, item properties, and now I'm going to do mono right. And now I have just the right track here. Now the interesting thing is I'm still only using one copy of this file on disk. It didn't make two copies of it on disk. Reaper uses what's called non-destructive editing, which means it will never edit this actual original file that I have here. Instead it's going to save in the Reaper project file the series of cut points and changes that I make to that audio so that I can always go back to the original state of things and never have a chance of losing my original audio. So now I have two tracks. I'm going to go ahead and double click here. Uh, I'll name these in a great way here. One great thing about Reaper is that you can do groups of tracks. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a new track. I'm going to call this narration. I'll drag this to the top and now I can turn this into a folder and now these two are grouped under here. Click on this control over on the left here and it will let me tighten that up. This is great if you've got a group of items that go together. For example, if you have an outro that has music under it and you've built all that ahead of time, you just want to have it sitting in your project and collapse all the other tracks that belong to it. If you have sound effects or something like that to go under your track, you can group those all up together. Or of course, if you've got seven or eight different contributors to a podcast, you can group them into uh, local people versus remote people on Skype or, or however you'd like to do it. So I've got my audio. I'm set to go just to start editing. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and click at the beginning here. I'm going to zoom in using that scroll wheel. This is to me the single biggest selling point of Reaper is I can zoom in but wherever the cursor point is simply by running the scroll wheel up and down. And I do that all the time while editing. I might look for a particular spot that looks like it's got a silence in it, click on it, zoom in, do an edit, and then zoom back out. So speaking of doing an edit, let's say we want to clip this section out. I click on the piece of audio I want to edit, right click, and I drag over what I want to do, and then I hit Control Delete. Now what Control Delete does is actually removes the piece of audio that I have here. And you can see it removed it only from the piece of audio that I had selected. That's exactly how Audacity works. If you're used to that, that's what you expect. But we can do better. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that, and I'm going to turn on what's called ripple editing. 
Ripple editing lets you apply the results of an edit to the entire rest of your project. So I'm going to turn on ripple editing twice, and with all of these dots selected, now any change I make will infect the entire project, not just a single track. So now when I hit control delete, look at that. It actually deletes the chunk of time that I had selected, and it automatically pulls the rest of the project to take up the gap, and it cut that same piece of audio out from the second track as well. In fact, if I had 30 tracks, it would have cut them out of all the track. In this case, that's exactly what I wanted. These two pieces of audio go together. If I'm going to cut a big chunk of time out of one, I want to cut it out of all of them. Not necessarily always what you want to do, but you have other options. For example, if I had switched this to single track, let's say I only wanted to cut this out of here, I could select that, control delete. Now that track only has been affected. So now I've got a nice edit there. But this edit is more than the edits in Audacity. If I zoom in quite a bit here, you can see this blue curve. This represents the volume of the track. Reaper has automatically faded out the audio here and faded in the audio on this matching track. This creates a seamless, popless transition. So even if the audio was very loud here and very quiet here, that quick fade up and down will remove any sort of pop or click that you would hear from that edit being in place. And Reaper did that automatically. I didn't have to ask it to do that. When I cut that time out, it automatically did that for me. Another great thing you can do with these transition effects, which is what this fade in, fade out is, you can actually crossfade as well. So I can take this and I can drag it over the previous clip. And now I'm actually crossfading between the clips, which means both clips are playing simultaneously from here to here. But during that time, this one's getting quieter and this one's getting louder. Obviously this is a technique that DJs use all the time for music, but it's also incredibly useful for audio production. If you have a word that's coming to an end and another word you want to have start right after it, it's often easier to crossfade those two together and just drag it left and right until you get that perfect gap between words that you're looking for. This is to do super tight editing when you're cutting up words very tightly. It can also be useful when you're cutting a piece of music down. If you have a piece of music that you're using for your intro, for example, and you'd like it to be much quieter, and you'd like it to be much shorter, you can often do these sorts of cuts and then crossfades inside the audio to get smooth transitions between the clipped out chunks of audio that you've done. This is, again, one of the killer features of Reaper for podcast editing and is incredibly useful. Here's another way it works. I'm going to drag this to the end. I've got this little piece of audio here that's coming and maybe I don't want to tighten this up, I don't want to cut that off, but I want to make that word much quieter so it sounds like I'm coming to the end of a sentence. I can actually drag this fade out like so and extend the time over which that fades out. I can of course shorten it up as well or get rid of it altogether. Another great feature, I can grab this and I can actually shorten this clip however much I want. And if I mess up and shorten it too much, I just pull it back to the right again and that audio is still there because it has not really been deleted. Again, non-destructive editing is a great thing. So with ripple editing on, I can pull this together, and even just dragging this top one is dragging all the pieces together. Again, a great time saver if you have multiple tracks. Some of my productions get up into the 15 or 20 tracks range, and being able to drag them around all together, for example, if I need to insert a promo here, I can just pull this all the way to the right, plenty of time for the promo, and then tuck it up to fit the promo back in.